Amen. Amen. Now we're going to get into a uh, chapter. I, I really don't like preaching this chapter. It's a hard chapter uh, today. It's a hard chapter for today. Okay, If this was whew, 20 years ago, no problem. But this is a hard chapter for today. Because it goes against, a lot of times it will go against what we think. And, and, it, and it's right now, I, I got, you know, we know that everything is being run by some crazies. I mean, I don't know if it's about like, like you, but I feel like I'm in some kind of television show, and I'm trying to change the channel, and it's just not changing. Can't get away from it. Yeah, it's like it's there all the time. I mean, after that election in 2016, all I felt like it is, is people that put the memes on, uh, you know, on Facebook, is incredibly true. What's that? Well, we got through one thing, and then and we got through it. Now release this. Now release the murder hornets. Now release, you know, the virus. Now release something else. And we can't get a break. Right. We see leaders that we now, they're exposed. That's the one thing we did. We did find out. Now our leaders are exposed. It's like somebody, it, it, you know the Wizard of Oz when he's behind the screen and they pull the screen, there's just some man there? I feel that that's what has happened. We pulled the screen out, which has been a facade, and we see how dirty these leaders are now. And they're badly dirty and they're, they're mean. And we see it there, taking money, killing kids. Stealing off of, uh, off the American people and, and places like China have been getting better than us, getting better things than us and building over us because our leaders. One of the guys that's gonna that's running right now and and it's a close race. There's something wrong with him. He looks like he's a skeleton in front of you. Looks like he's just going to wither away and fall down. And they get behind him and, and it's like, here's the questions he gets. What color is this orange? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the questions he has to answer when the press gets in front of him. And then we have our president of the United States and they just hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer. And, it's, and, he's, and, and here our economy is doing better. Our, our, our people have been doing much better. With it, I mean, just look at this town. This town was desolate just four years ago. Now there's people with jobs in the town. And what do they do? Get rid, try and get rid of them. Try and get rid of the middle class. Oh, we were better under uh, some moron. I'm sorry that I'm ranting, but i got to tell you something. This needs be. This needs be. I vote against everybody that any which way has any relation to any Democrat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? We have to. We will vote principles. We will not vote emotions. We have, the, for the first time, a Christian platform that hasn't been seen. And yes, it wasn't even seen during the days of Ronald Reagan. And that's why this world hates what we do. You think this is against President Trump? This is against you. You are the biggest enemy that they hate. They don't hate the evangelicals. They hate you. The people of the book. They hate you. And this is where it's all driven. Right to here. How do you know? We can go down to Walmart and all stand around in Walmart, but they don't want us to meet in here. Let me tell you something. We were reading this morning, and we're coming towards the end, and we're in the we're in the area of what Judah was dealing with. What's that? It's it's the Lord, and He's turning around and He's saying it's almost time. You want to kill those little kids? You want to do these dirt, these things against my people? You want to do these things against my church, my bride? You want to kick it around? How would you feel that someone's kicking around your kids? You have to get up very upset with it. You know what's happening? The Lord's drawing a line, and it's almost time. It's not going to stop people until we're out of here. It's going to escalate. But we're in a fight. We're in a fight. Stand your ground. 
That's why you were left here to stand your ground now. Preach the gospel, get people saved. It's that critical. We're near the end. Let's go to Romans 13. I set you up pretty good for this, haven't I? We're going to get through this whole chapter. The Bible says in Romans 13, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive them to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this uh, preaching, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord God, for uh, what we're in right now, Lord Father. I, I thank you, Lord Father, for the humbleness of how we're supposed to act. Uh, we see things. And what manner of people shall we be? Lord, put me aside and talk to the people and tell them how, they want, how you want them to act, Lord Father, during a trying time. And thank you, Lord, for being good to us. Anoint the area, Lord God, and let us take this message outside. We thank you, Lord, and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, the first thing you have to understand is God ordains a government. Okay, He ordained a government at, at the days of Noah. You see, the problem is that before Noah came, before Noah and after the garden, in that time period, what they were doing at that time, they were living by conscience. What's conscience? I'll do what's right or do and not do what's wrong. But what do you think happened between Adam out of the garden and Noah? By conscience, man, oh, and evil. And it said he was evil from his youth. So God turns around and he says, let me set up a government. And the government is set up like this. He says, he that sheds men's blood, by man's blood, his blood's going to be shed, right? What's that tell you about government? That means that government is there to punish the wicked. Hey, why would God right away say murder? That was the major way of death. People were living until they were six, seven hundred years old. Some people till they were nine hundred years old. What was killing them? The same thing that killed Abel. What's that? Murder. They're a bunch of murderers. The major, a major crime rate, a major murder rate was going on at the time in the very beginning. So God had to set up a government to punish and to protect. That's what a government is to do, to punish. Now, you'll notice, he said, if you shed men's blood, if you murder a man, guess what should happen to you? You should die, God said. What is the one thing they don't do now? They do not kill murderers no more. They do not punish. I told you, it's, uh, we were talking about it today. Uh, today, they can harm kids and nobody cares. There's people in lines and lines and lines going in to kill the unborn. Humans have humans. Inside the woman is a human. When you destroy it, you destroy a human. Not a tadpole. It's a human. Uh, hey, I'll give it to you just like this, like my dad said it. Girls, if you don't want to have a baby, keep your legs closed. Harshly said, but true. Harshly said, but true. And there you go. When what is government? They want to get into our money. Hey, let's control the money. Let's control education. How they do with that? They're ruining everything that they touch. Why? Because the government was to protect and to destroy 
murderers. They're, the, it's a hammer, the government. So whenever they get something, you know what they do? They hammer it. They hammer it. Their idea is let's throw all the money at it. Hey, we got a problem. Throw money at it. What does that do? That hasn't done anything. It doesn't work that way. Well, let's get into the book a little. Sometimes you have to realize you don't have to respect the person. You have to respect the office of the person. I don't respect Andrew Como. In fact, I think he's a devil. But I respect the office of governor. Let's look at the Bible. He says, let every soul be subject, verse number one. Let every soul be subject to hire, does it say people? What does it say? Where do they get their powers from? Now I'm going to show you where they get their powers from. Okay, in the Constitution, everybody in the Bill of Rights, it says each one of those laws that's in the beginning, it says Congress shall make what? No law. Congress shall make no law in what? That infringes upon your free speech, right? Your freedom of religion. Your freedoms. These rights shall not be infringed upon. What's that? Your right to bear arms. Not to be infringed upon. Okay? Let me ask you something. Where did the government give you the right? They didn't. It says they can't make a law taking away your rights. That's the difference. That's our document. That is the document that, that is called the power. We are a constitutional government. We get our powers from a constitution. Now, we have to go where the rights are. So what do we do? There was a superseding document before that that was, pre, that was before the Constitution. It's not the Articles of Confederation because the Constitution replaced those. So the document that made us a country was something called the Declaration of what? Independence on, that was drafted and put forth on July 4th and then it took a little while to get it signed. But everybody signed it to rebel against the king. And that document says that we have something called, it's self-evident, that we have these things called inalienable what? Rights. Endowed by our creator. God gave you the rights. And the government has no right to take it away. What's the powers? The documents. The Constitution, and then the Declaration of Independence. And guess what? Thomas Jefferson just turned around and he said, guess what? That ain't the higher power. It was endowed by who? God. Our Creator. And where did they find that? Right here in this book. That book has the powers of all things. So we have to realize, yes, there's a government. Yes, they're going to be coming evil men. But the powers derived from the documents precede then the book. The reason why God wanted speech to be there is because faith cometh by and hearing by the word of God. God wanted to make it easy for you to get saved and see him. He's placed you in this area. I'll tell you, there's one good thing about an oppressive government, and that is that the church probably will grow. The church grew in the very beginning because they were being tormented, oppressed, and, and tortured by Rome. And it grew. But when they got to this country, and in the 1600s under the Philadelphia church age, and this book became... Everything. Just so you know, we got here in 1608. This book got published in 1611. And guess what they were governing by? That book. Why do you think this place grew? Why do you think, you know, you think the place grew because of the government? No, you know why this area up here grew? Because of a man. God sent a man into the area. And he sent preachers into the area. And there were great revivals. Up here was a man by the name of Charles Finney. Charles Finney came into the area from Adams, New York. And he came up to this area and preached the gospel. And most of these churches, the church down in Antwerp and all around these areas, 
These churches flourished because the gospel came into the area. i got to tell you, God's been merciful to this area because if you haven't figured it out yet, there are families and families and communities still in this area. It's dwindling, but guess what? It's still there. You better take that blessing, and that blessing is from God and of God Almighty. Amen. The powers. He says that's the power is those documents. He said those the powers they're they're ordained by God. How why not? They they have God's uh, they have God in it. And you know uh, just so you know, did anybody ever use this against you? Well, the Constitution doesn't have God in it. They already hey look this is how the the forefathers yeah they're dead but this is how they looked at it. You'd have to be stupid not to believe in God. You read that book and even the heathens said God gave me the power. That's what Cyrus said. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said. These were evil men that turned around and said, I got the power from God. They knew something. They knew something. They had a fear of that way. Even Ahab had a fear. But it says in verse number one, let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but of God. God did it in writing, didn't he? And they did it in writing. Did they not? He says... The powers that be ordained by God. And who resisteth? The power. Resisteth the ordinance of God. So when you grab your constitution, people, guess what? It says Congress makes no law. But what that's saying is you have the liberty to do right, not the liberty to do what you want. That's the difference. That's the difference. People think they have the liberty to do whatever they want to do. And that is not what God said. He said, you have the liberty to do right. You don't do wrong. You do right, he said. So, these are ordained, and if you resist at them, you resist the ordinance of God, verse 2. And he says, they that resist shall receive to themselves what? Damnation. What's that? You're going to be put in prison. You can be put in prison. You can be get corporal punishment. These are what it's talking about. Damnation to what? Not your soul to what? Your body. Your existence. There's two books. There's the book of life, which is about your soul, right? Where your soul goes. Then there's something called the book of the living. Under heaven. Those are the two books. Stop listening to these preachers that are saying something else. The two books are the book of life. That is the book of life. Your name's in it, right? What's your name? Whosoever. Then you have the book of the living. What's that? That's another book. And that's what Moses was saying. Don't write their name out of that book. What? The book of the living under heaven. What's that? You got in there when you were born, and guess what will happen when you die? Shh, you're out. That's the book of the living. That clears things up a lot, doesn't it? Amen. So, he says, you'll receive unto, that they receive unto themselves damnation. They could get hurt. They could be put in prison. Verse number three, for rulers. Now he goes to the rulers. Why? We have to have rulers. Now, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then be not afraid of the power? Yes. How many people here have been riding down the street and they're going a little fast, and then all of a sudden behind them, they see the red lights. You start jumping for joy. Yes, I got to get stopped. I mean, maybe Yvonne, because it's so infrequently, she's still frequently getting stopped, and she knows all the cops. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. She, she does have a lead foot, just so you know. <laughs> but Roxanne's got a lead foot, too. Yeah, I can see her in her truck. I see her leave here. It's like, ah. <laughs> She's one of them people that probably does everything aggressive, you know. She has to fluff a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> no, drive my car. I have a get out of jail free card that Jack's dad gave me, and it's kind of awkward because they call him. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry if Stephen ever lets you drive his yellow car. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> he says, they're not a terror, but let me tell you something. He says, um, but he says, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. You notice how he said, 
do that which is good. He didn't say do not do evil. He said do that which is good. Why? God wants to concentrate on the on that positive part, not on the negative part. We always do it in the negative way. We should be looking towards the positive too. What? Well, just do that which is right. Okay? Don't do the things that are wrong. Don't steal. No, no. Just do things that are right. You already know don't steal. Do things that are right. Okay? He says, uh, look at uh, verse number four. For he, that ruler, he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, do what? Be afraid. Be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a, a revenger to execute wrath upon that, upon him that doeth evil. Go over to Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs 19. Little past the middle of the book. Proverbs 19, verse number 25, Proverbs 19, verse number 25. This is what that's talking about. But if thou do evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. He is a minister of God, a, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil, uh, 19, Proverbs 19, look at verse 25. Smite a scorner, and the simple will be beware. The simple will beware. Uh, if they were to turn around and bring back the death penalty in full, and just so you know, didn't have 25, uh, 25 different ways to try and appeal it. If they just had an appeal or did, a, did the real process, guess what? We'd have a lot of difference here, wouldn't we? If they, look, like it or not, when these cops get out of the cars, the, what you have to realize today is this is, this has gotten, this is how crazy it's gotten. Has evil gotten larger and grown since you were a kid? So it's even more and more, right? So you get these police officers, and what do you think they're dealing with? Goody stuff, or you think they're dealing with more and more evil? You better realize you got to give them a little leniency on how they act. Why? You got a lot of punks out there. People, I'm going to tell you straight out. George Floyd, here's the question, people. What was he doing resisting? What was he doing with that girl when he, when he raped that girl? Why didn't he get killed then? It's a death sentence. Why didn't he get killed? Hey, look, if you're going to let these people run around, government, guess what? You're going to have problems just like you had. You want to loot a store? Automatic weapons. They do the job. They're real good. What are your kids doing down on the street burning stuff? You play with fire, you get fire. What's that mean? Sometimes people get hurt. Sometimes you're going to get hurt. You're not to be down there hanging with that type of people. So when you hang with a mess, guess what? You get into a mess. Amen. Man, the preacher's yelling today. You know why I'm yelling? This breaks to the heart of me. I spent 22 years of my life in the service protecting a country for their document. My oath was to the Constitution of the United States over all these enemies, foreign and domestic. You know where the greatest enemy is today? He's in the domestic. He's inside the country. He's in the government. They're stealing money from other governments to get their laws to pass in their favor. Using this country like it's some kind of money changer organization. And they're stealing it away. And yes, our governor's part of it. Amen. Amen. The only guy I know running around killing old people in, the, in, in nursing homes and then turns around and says it's the president's fault. Yeah. He did it! He did it! And then he know what he told us in the end? God didn't do it. God didn't, God didn't do anything. He had all these people praying, praying, praying. God didn't do that. We say, yeah, you did it. You put them people in the nursing home too. 
You had ships out there and you had field hospitals. They could have taken care of all the load and you had ventilators. Yeah. He had everything he needed. And you know what he did? He stuffed them into nursing homes where the, the ones that were weaker to deal with it and he killed them. Yeah. He's a murderer. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm glad I'm online. He can give it to him. <laughs> Send it to the guy. I don't care. I'll see him next. Don't bother me. Amen. It says he's a revenge revenger. Uh, look at verse number five. He says, wherefore, ye must needs be subject. Why? Not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. You know what he says? You will be obedient to your laws, not just because you're afraid for wrath's sake, not just because you're afraid of the penalty, but for conscience sake. What's that? You, you know, you should feel bad when you do something wrong. You should have something inside you that says, hey, you're doing something wrong. Okay? I'm not talking about your taxes. Everybody does something on their taxes. Okay? That says pay your fair share. So you pay. Everybody here is paying their fair share. Let me tell you something. You're way over the fair share. You know what the fair share is? It's 20% of total. You're paying somewhere in the area of 30-something right now. That's not fair. Some of these bums on the street don't do anything just getting free money. Take it from them and get it and tell them to get a job. You know, we got to stop that. we got to stop with the uh, putting people. We, what we're doing, people, is we're feeding. And God never said feed the poor. I don't know if you know that. He never said that. There's a lot of churches out here. I can, I can point to them if I want. we got one on the corner down there. You know, they have a sign outside, and they said, they said feeding millions. What a lie. They haven't given the gospel out once, and that's what they're trying to say they're doing. You know what they're doing? Getting them soup. Well, I would just send them to hell on a full stomach. Because guess what? Feeding the poor is not doing anything for them. I feed you in here if it, if it needs to be. I'll do that. I'll feed safe people. But poor people, yeah, I'll go get them a meal. But you better believe they're getting something else with that meal. Yeah. They're getting the gospel with that meal. That's the most important thing. What's that? Getting saved is the most important thing. Never, nobody ever thinks about this, Miss Roxanne. You know what they never think about? Maybe that person has been put in that situation so that they'll find God. And that's what he's done. He's hedged them in so that they can find him. And he says, don't do these things. Don't do right for wrath's sake. Do it for right for conscience sake. Be good. And now watch verse number six. Uh, four for this cause. This is the re this cost pay you tribute. You need to pay your taxes. I I'm not saying to be overtaxed. Be pay your taxes. Why? They, they're the God's ministers. They deserve to be paid. Your mayor does deserve to be paid. If he's doing a good job, he should get paid for it. Attending continually upon this very thing. Verse seven. Render therefore to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom. That's talking about uh, stuff that comes in, a custom. He says, custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. You should fear the cops. To whom fear honor. To whom honor the judges. They should get honor. Uh, they should honor to whom honor. Look, but the thing is, honor, some people don't deserve it. Some people don't deserve it. I don't think many of our judges today. I mean, I see people riding around today with seven DWIs. Yeah. Haven't you learned anything, Judge? Or are you a drinker too? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you ever see your public officials around here? Where are they at it on Friday night? Yeah. Something to think about. That clouds your judgment. It's not for kings. It's not for leaders. It's not for leaders to drink. Oh, Lemuel, the Bible says. They have bad judgment. Verse number eight, owe no man anything. Don't owe any man anything, he says, but to love, but to love one another. One another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. If you want to owe someone something, owe them love is what he's saying. You want to you want to owe some own love. Okay, that's what he's talking about. He says, "Be good for what? For love's sake. Be a good citizen for what? For love's sake. 
You know, uh, stop fighting over the debt. Some of you uh, married people, stop fighting over the debt. Why? For love's sake. But I'll tell it to you, to you like this. Stop going into debt. You're driving a debt upon your family. Say amen, please. Amen. I know it's quiet. Amen. But I got a credit card. Stop using it all the time. Oh, my. Stop. <laughs> Verse number nine. For this. For this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. He's starting to give you laws here, these commandments. Uh, just so you know, these are commandments 6 through 10. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. They are the first 10 commandments. Okay. You have ten commandments, right? Those are the six to ten. Now, what you're going to find in the commandments is there, uh, if you went back to Exodus chapter 20, let's go there real fast, Exodus chapter 20. That way I can show you this. This is something you're going to take with you and know for the, you can know this for the rest of your life here. Some of you already know this, just so you know. If you're here Wednesday night, you probably know this. Exodus chapter 20, when God gives the uh, when God gives the Ten Commandments. Now, when God gives these commandments, He's going to give them in sections. And guess what? They're not equal. The commandments are not equal. Okay? If you sin, one sin is driving you from heaven. That's salvation, justification. But imputation, not all the commandments are the same. Why? Look down at verse number um, 12. Now, if you, have, uh, if you have a Bible that has them, did you notice there's a paragraph separator right there? It starts a new paragraph. That means that before that, there were four commandments. They were all pertaining to the Lord. Thou shalt... Uh, verse number uh, 2, I am the Lord thy God. Verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. Second commandment, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven. No statues, no idols, no little tikis on your, no angels on your thing. None of that stuff. Okay? Then the next commandment is verse number 7, thou shalt not take the Lord thy God in vain. That's the third commandment. Fourth commandment, remember, remember the Sabbath. Just so you know, that commandment isn't instituted anymore because Jesus is our rest. He's our Sabbath. We're in him. We don't have that anymore. That's why we do it on Sunday, the first day of the week. We give God the first fruits. Amen. Okay, now, after that's done, you'll notice that was four commandments. Then chat, uh, verse number 12 is start of a new paragraph. These from 12 down are how you deal with man. Don't hurt this. Don't covet. Don't sleep with another man's wife. Don't commit adultery. Stuff like that. Okay? Now, I want you to understand something. If you had two tablets, if you had two tablets, one tablet would have four commandments. The one's against God, right? Yeah. The second one would have six. They're against man. The ones on the first one, guess what? They're more important. Why? Why? There's your relationship with the Lord. The second ones are your relationship with man. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, a lot of times if you break the ones... God, God will forgive a lot of the people who do the first, the last six. Why? Because they're against man. Yeah. But he, he, he doesn't like the first four. What's that? That's what Eve had done. She had broken those first four. And that's why God got a little upset with her. That's why women are now keepers that don't preach. I don't know if that's altogether true, but it seems as such. Because they broke those first four. You'll notice if a guy in the Bible breaks those first four, he's pretty much, not that he's done, but he's not gonna, he's not pretty much the man of God anymore. Amen. It's those last ones. Remember, Moses murdered a man. Moses was a murderer, David was a murderer, but not those first four. They loved the Lord. Amen. So, I want you to go on another piece. 
We've got another portion of this. Go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus is going to deal with this again. In Matthew chapter 22. You've been here, you've read it, and you said they're new commandments, and they kind of are, but they're not. Matthew 22. Go down to in Matthew 22. Go to, we're going to start in verse number uh, 30, 35. We all there? Matthew 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a what? Lawyer. Say that ten times. What do you get? Liar. Asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great great commandment in the law. He's looking at the ten. Which one's the greatest? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. God wants your heart and he wants your mind. Okay? Now that's the first. This is, verse 38, this is the first and the great commandment. You know what that is? Love the Lord thy God. Wasn't that the first commandment? Okay, you say, is that the great commandment? Yeah, the first four. All that he's talking about, that new commandment right there, he says that's the greatest commandment. That deals with the first commandments, the first four commandments. Okay? He's making sure you understand that if you love the Lord thy God, you won't break any of those four. We understand that. Now look, he says, verse 39 back in Matthew 22, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So what he's saying is those last ones, love thyself, and love thy, love thy neighbor as thyself, you know what that means? That means I'm not committing adultery with somebody else because guess what? That's his wife. And I want to love my neighbor as I love myself. I don't want anybody else. I don't want anybody committing adultery with my wife. So I'm not going to commit adultery on somebody else. Okay? I'm not going to want... Larry's got some stuff. He's got this uh, weed eater. It's got a, a power jack on it. Man, I'd like to have that weed eater. But you know what? I'm not going to covet that weed eater to try and get it from Larry. Okay? <laughs> Because it's his stuff. I'm not going over to Larry's house, opening his garage door, which sometimes he leaves it open, just so you know. Go in and take that weed eater, put it in my truck, and go home with it. I'm not going to do that, even though I have a problem. Larry, you have a shut your door. Watch your weed Why? Because I love Larry, and I don't want to hurt him. That's what that's about. So you've got two sets of commandments. One is that, and they hinge upon the other. Okay, so we understand what that's what he's saying. Those commandments. Anybody learn something new? Yeah. Amen. That's how that's being taught to you. Inside of those ten, those two commandments are all ten, and all your conscience is in that. Okay, go back to Romans chapter thirteen. <laughs> Now watch what he says. Verse number 10. He says, love, love, worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is what? The fulfilling of the law. The love fulfills the law. What's that? That's what he's trying to talk about. He says, you be a good neighbor. You be a good good." good person to your friends. You be a good person to anybody that's out there. Don't go around trying to do unto them as before they do to you. Yeah. It's don't do anything. Do right for people. Do Have the liberty to do right. There's something here called conscience sake. For love's sake. For conscience sake here. Uh, you know, there's also something else here. Okay, he says now look at verse number 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to do what? Wake out of your sleep. Uh, he's talking about spiritual things here. Awake out of your sleep. For now is the time. Now is our salvation what? Nearer 
That when we believe, God, what do you mean I have salvation when I believe? He's talking about the whole thing. It's closer to the Lord coming back. It's closer to the rapture right now. What person ought you to be in your conversation? Stop cursing. But I got mad. So what? Learn a better vocabulary. Stop cursing in other people's houses too. Amen. Amen. Go to Proverbs 19 again. Preacher's on fire today. I'm not hurting you. A little bit of a rebuke. Back to 19 in Proverbs. And now watch here in verse number 15. It says, Slothfulness casteth into a what? A deep sleep. Slothfulness, going about things in a lazy type way. Slothfulness, casteth into a deep sleep, and idle soul shall suffer hunger. You're in a deep sleep like that. What do you need to do? Awake. Spiritually, you need to wake up and see what's coming down the way. Why? Because the Lord's coming. Look, you, you got to make a stand. But guess what you got to do? you got to get rid of that evil part of you that, that wants to have revenge. Why? The Lord's coming back. Is that the way you want to have him see him? No. Oh, Lord, I told him. I want you to get that out of your vocabulary. Well, I told him, or I told her, or I told them. Get that out of your vocabulary, because i got to tell you what, most of the time, you're lying. You're just trying to be big in front of your friends or somebody else. Get that out of your vocabulary. You don't want to have to tell anybody anything. Your actions are going to speak better than your words anyway, right? How many of you, hey, look, i got a problem in my mouth. Everybody knows it, right? Stop. <laughs> but here's the thing, Okay. I have a problem. I'm kind of like one of them guys that I'll snuff. I put it out real fast, and then you see me come back later. What's that to do? I have to make up for my big mouth. Anybody here have that problem? We kind of say things out, and then we got to come back and realize, hey, you know, I, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Okay, you got to go back and get it right. If it's in here, please get right with people. I don't. We don't need that, and we're supposed to walk with the Lord and hear anything. Okay? Be good to your brethren. These are the most important people. They're going to spend all eternity with them. But let me tell you something, man. we got to do the same thing with others. we got to watch this thing. That little tongue in there, man, it can cause a lot of damage. We're too close to the end. Amen. Back to Romans. i got to get through this. I don't want to be on it next week, people. Watch what he says. He says, verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk in what? Honestly. Let us walk honestly. As in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in the chambering and wantonness. That wantonness is, is you ever see an army, it goes into a beautiful city like Paris. And this is what uh, the German army in World War II was to, wanted to do. They wanted to go over everything. And they said, wanton destruction. What's that? Destroy everything that you walk over. That's what they looked in to do. And that's what it's saying. God doesn't want you to be like that. He doesn't want you to have wanton. He doesn't want you to leave every place you, you leave in a destroying fashion. He says, uh, chambering and wantonness. A not in strife. Now look at the next one. Envying. You know it was for envy that they gave up Jesus? Do you know it was for envy that, that Satan tried to rebel against God? It's by envy that a lot of you have actually rebelled in your lifetime. It's because of envy. And God says what? And you need to get away from it because why? Who can stand before envy? You know most of the people, they, they even leave a church. You know why they leave it? It's envy. I'm talking about good good. Good churches. It's and there's a lot of envy that'll be in the church house. Well, you know, he shook Yvonne's hand and he didn't shake mine. Those are the <laughs> stupidest things I ever hear. I left the church. Why? He didn't greet me in the morning. I hear that people don't. You think that's 
that's that's there. Okay, and people, well, did you ever think about doing it first? You know, I, I mean, I, I, I got to tell you something, man. I'm terrible. I'm, hey, I, I forget, I, I forget everything. Just ask me my uh, anniversary. Thing. Yeah. I'm like, what? I know, John. Stop, Miss Adrian. You're always on top of me. Oh Not at <laughs> I'm terrible with it. I I forget everything. I say the wrong thing in front of people. Mm -hmm. I have that fault. I, I anybody knows me knows that I got a problem like that. You know, I'm the guy that comes in the room and some lady standing there and she's not. There's nothing. She's you know, and there's me over there and I go, hey. So what do you do? Oh, <laughs> oh, I've done that. I have too. Oh. And my wife's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the guy that when people say, don't say anything about that guy's this and that guy's that, and I'm walking around, hey, how's that stuff going with that thing? <laughs> and I, my wife lives like this, I'm a police. <laughs> because I do those things. The only person that does that more than me is her. I mean, she did that. And we were trying to get this lady saved. We walk into her house. We're, we're witnessing to her. And Yvonne turns around and goes, Hey, didn't your dad pee in your shoes when you were young? <laughs> I was like, Where does this come from? <laughs> you think the, the lady never came to church? <laughs> she moved. I was like, Huh? She moved. I, I, I was going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you were lucky. <laughs> I got to tell you, it was like, I stood there when Yvonne said it, I said, well, I guess she ain't coming to church. <laughs> <laughs> but God, we were still friends with her. I knocked on her. We knocked on her door again. It was a better visit the second time. But, you know, we, we say things, okay? Amen. He says, walk honestly, okay? And then the, the last verse, he says, and he says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you turn around and you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what you'll do? You'll do right. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. You, you get in these areas where you're troubled, and I, and I know, you build that thing up inside, you, you know that chest tightening you get, and you just want to blur it out. Okay, that's that's your flesh. It tingles up. And what happens is you gotta you got to fight against that. That's why people used to say, step away and take a deep breath, count to 10 or whatever, they actually give you time to do what? Think. You need to think about things. And he says, put on Christ. Why? Because you're putting on your flesh. Nobody has to hear all the time that opinion that we have, that great opinion that we have. Because guess, it's like, look, it's like turning around and some lady does her hair up. She gets, she pays 50 bucks and whatever, gets her hair dolled up. I have no problem with that. Don't start getting on me. But anyway, they do those things, and they want to be all dolled up and everything else, and there's Larry, and his wife, and Mary comes home, and there's Larry, he turns around, and she says, oh, and you know what Larry says? What they do to your hair? <laughs> and next thing you know, Mary's got this metal piece in her hand trying to hit him in the head. <laughs> what did he do wrong? He opened up his mouth. <laughs> You see, you know what, Mary, well, what Larry should have put on, even if he didn't like the hair, he should have put on, should have turned around and said something a little better than that. But what he's saying is, look, put on Jesus Christ. Uh, it's not about what Jesus would do. You ever see those people with, that gives you your opinion of what Jesus would do. It's about what he did. Okay? He doesn't go around doing that kind of stuff. In fact, he tries to edify people, build them up, and exhort them. It's the people who bully people and the people who are uh, putting burdens on people. That's when Jesus turns around and gets a little upset, doesn't he? And then he turns around and he puts them in their place. Okay? You don't have to be that person either. It just causes a lot of strife. You know what this chapter's about? It's about being a good person. Look, you're, I'm not saying... I'm talking about you saved people. Paul's not talking of talking to people who aren't saved here. He's trying to say, you know better than that. I'm not telling you not to do your rights. You have the right to free speech. And the government doesn't have the right to take it away. You should stand against that. 
But if the cop turns around and says, move to the next corner, do what? Move to the next corner. You can go speak the same stuff at the next corner. That's how you have to take that. Maybe God's moving you down to that area to speak down on another corner. Maybe there's somebody there down on that corner that needs at that time to have a track. Don't always look to put your back up all the time. God is Your, your door is not going to be closed without God opening up a new one. Amen. Even in this COVID thing, I've got to tell you, I never shut down. The reason I never shut down is because the government gave me that, the government said it wasn't supposed to infringe upon us. And I opened these doors up in Governor for a reason. And the reason was so that people would worship God. And I wasn't going to shut them and then shut down the worshiping of God. Now, I, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not putting it out and saying, well, I'm a big guy or something like that. That was just principle that I had. That was just my principle. But if you felt vulnerable, please, don't come out. If you feel vulnerable, but the worshiping of the Lord should not, should not be stifled and should not be impeded. Ever, ever, for the sake of not just, it's not just the church, the nation, the planet. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. What's that? There's no joy if we're not worshiping the Lord above. And I won't do it in fear. And I won't do it by restriction. I will do it by the restrictions of the Bible and what God said. And that is in spirit and in truth and all that way. Do we understand about this chapter more and more? And it really is good to be saved. But you have the liberty to do right now that you're saved. You have the ability to obey those commandments because you have God himself inside you telling you which way is right and which way is wrong. Never let that be clouded. And when that becomes clouded, open your Bible up and ask God to show you where right and wrong is. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for our time here. And thank you for the message this morning, Lord Father. Thank you for talking to our hearts. And thank you, Lord, for telling us to be good citizens in the outside world. Thank you, 